Welcome to Opal STV. Today I am in Sydney, actually near the Sydney Harbour, in the office of Australian Fund Monitors, together with founder Chris Gosselin. Chris, tell us more, what is Australian Fund Monitors? Australian Fund Monitors was established in 2006 as an information service, really for offshore investors as an eyes and ears service to allow offshore investors to understand what fund managers and funds were available in Australia. The big challenge for Australian fund managers and for investors tends to be the distance between Australia and the rest of the world. You know, 24 hours to Europe and 24 hours to New York. Even Singapore and Hong Kong are 8 and 10 hours respectively. So just that distance is a big issue and what we wanted to do was create transparency and an information flow on the ground of what was happening in Australia. Tell us more about the universe of the Australian fund managers and what is special about them? Well Matthias, on our database of Australian funds we have about 320 funds from about 90 to 100 fund managers and the vast majority of those are local funds, although there are quite a few offshore funds, Cayman-based funds or, or, or other offshore domiciled funds. Generally, we look at local managers because that's where the focus is, uh, obviously, for Australian fund monitors. The, the universe really is spread across quite dramatically. So within those funds, we might have a manager such as Platinum, who have maybe got 15 or 16 billion dollars under management across six or seven funds. Uh, equally, we might have startup funds that might only have three or six months track record. And in between that, we have everything, you know, funds with 200 million, funds with a billion, funds with two or three billion. So it is very varied. The parameters are, are, are very broad, the strategies are broad. And I think the one thing that really typifies the Australian scene is we've got a highly educated financial services sector and a very well regulated uh, uh, financial services sector. So the regulator ASIC, every fund has to be licensed appropriately and it's quite a a big challenge to get a license for a fund manager and to prove experience etc etc so it's a it's a well structured industry that tends to be split between managers who are looking for local investors Australian domiciled investors and then other managers and funds who are looking for offshore investors and that's why they have to have a, a, an offshore structure We have all the major investment banks plus local banks and trading houses down here and brokers. So the talent pool is considerable. So the talent pool really then is divided between Australians who've gone offshore, uh, either with a JP Morgan or a Goldman Sachs or one of the, the, the large investment banks or Macquarie, the homegrown investment bank, and have spent a number of years offshore gaining experience and then for some reason they like to come back to Australia and get a bit of the lifestyle of beaches and sun and you know maybe they're married so their wives want to come back to Australia with children so you get quite a few expat Australians coming back when they're maybe 35 or 40 and that's probably quite a good talent pool for the hedge fund sector. They've got a lot of experience, they've got international experience, they un understand international markets. They've, they've globalised themselves, which is terrific. The other side of it is, is those managers who are really managing Aussie equities only, long short or market neutral, or long only. And they haven't necessarily had that offshore experience, but their expertise is really in the local market. And again, there's a, a terrific talent pool because of the, the structure of the industry that is so well developed and has so much outside influence plus local control. So who is actually investing into Australian hedge funds and how strong for the Australian hedge funds themselves is their domestic market when it comes to raising assets? So who in Australia is investing in Australian hedge funds?
Well, obviously, sort of during 2008 and early 2009, there was a real dislocation in the market. I mean, we had market problems, a lot of offshore investors redeemed from local managers just because they were very liquid. One of the aspects of Australian funds, which we'll come to in a moment, is that generally the terms are very favourable for, for investors. They can either be daily, weekly or monthly redemptions. And beyond monthly redemptions, it's really quite rare to get three month or six month redemptions or lockups. So the whole industry is very much geared to monthly redemptions at the outside and a lot of funds, especially for local investors and retail investors, have daily redemption and daily pricing. We can really divide the Australian market between offshore investors who are looking for Australian funds and then the local market. The local market is divided into three distinct sectors. There's the institutional sector, the big superannuation funds, the big institutions, pension funds. And they tend to look globally at what they're investing in. So they have the capacity, they have the resources, the people, the skills, the asset consultants to be able to cast their net globally for the type of funds, the type of strategy and the asset class they're looking for. That's about one third, I suppose, of the investor base. The, the other third then is probably retail. So at the other end of that scale where we have a very well developed retail distribution and, and fund production system here with the banks in particular very large banks, AMP, the big institutions, at actually producing product mainly long only for the retail market. And the hedge funds are increasingly looking at targeting that retail market as well. But it is quite difficult for all the reasons you'd expect of research and compliance and the increased research and re compliance that's required. In the middle of that is what we call the self-directed investor. A self-directed investor, if we take in the superannuation sector, for instance, which represents about 1.7 or $8 trillion of investment funds in Australia, one third of that, in fact, just over one third of that is now made up of what they call self-managed superannuation funds. And they're effectively self-directed investors high net worth, ultra high net worth, family offices who are actually making their own decisions. And that's becoming probably the most important area for hedge funds and boutique funds in Australia. The difficulty is finding them, whereas the institutions, you can always find the institutions because they've got their name up on the local building. And you can find the retail investor because they're all controlled effectively by platforms and retail advisors and distribution groups. So they're a very well-trodden path to raise capital for. It's the self-directed investor that's more difficult to find, but is a much more attractive investor often. They're probably more committed. They make a larger allocation per fund. They tend to make their decisions more quickly. They're less fee-focused than the big institutions and the retail distribution networks are. There's about half a million self-managed super funds, which are almost by definition all self-directed investors or controlled by self-directed investors who are, who are making their own investment decisions. Half a million self-managed super funds, the population in Australia of only 23 million is a significant proportion. The self-directed investor is, is obviously has a larger amount of money. So they're more educated, they're better educated. They're normally, whether they qualify as high net worth or not, they're used to making their own investment decisions, whether it's in the equities market or in property market. Tell us more about the range of strategies that Australian hedge fund managers offer to their investors. Well, 
The majority of funds here are equity long short. If we look at the alternative space or hedge fund space, absolute return space. Uh, so probably 60, maybe 70% of funds in the database are equity long short, whether they be market neutral, long biased, short biased, using derivatives, however they may be managing the money, they're basically equity. And probably a significant proportion of them are Australian equity long short, because quite often they're marketing to and raising capital uh, from local investors. Outside that, there are the usual commodity funds, global macro funds, FX funds, credit funds, although the credit and fixed interest funds aren't as, uh, aren't as well developed as they probably are in North America or Europe. It's just not, that's, that's not a market that is as significant here as the equity market. Equity markets in Australia, they're very liquid. We have some very large global companies, BHP Billiton, Rio, the, the large banks, Telstra. And, and then we obviously have a lot of smaller companies where th there is an element of resources based. I think it's a mistake to think of Australia, Australian equities as just being resource based. I think there's a perception overseas that that's it. Because of BHP, because of Rio and other, you know, our mining resources industry and the boom that's been going on there as a result of China's growth, that, that's, that, that's a mistake. The, the local industry, quite a few managers in the local industry actually specialise in resources, but that's been a difficult area. It's the, if you talk about performance, the resource orientated long short funds have really struggled over the last year or so as the mining boom has come off and prices particularly of bulk products such as iron ore and coal have uh, and more recently gold have uh, have come off their peak if we actually look at performance over the last five years or ten years against the australian asx 200 equity index market for instance Performance of funds has been very good. Some has been outstanding. There are funds that have had consistently positive years, even in 2008. There are funds that have far outperformed. But our index, what we call the AFM index of all funds, has significantly outperformed on a cumulative basis the local equity market. We tend to use that as a sort of a benchmark. Although most funds are benchmark unaware, we use that as a comparison tool to see how the funds are, are travelling and to allow us to compare the performance of, of funds irrespective of their strategy or style. So we're, we're looking at, we're comparing apples with apples rather than, the, than apples and oranges and that's right. useful. And you can see in this chart that actually the cumulative performance, particularly in the downtimes, the risk aversion has been excellent from funds. And that's really what investors I think are looking for is some leverage to the upside but without the, the, the downside risk that a long only product provides.